Now we have the nodes also across Gemini and Sagittarius. I call that the chart of the perpetual student, the natural teacher, the traveler, a person who's always active with the mind, always reaching out for more knowledge. And we can see that the south node in the eighth house and in Gemini says there's some kind of lesson there with those two qualities. Now what? We explore, you know, there's always a po variety of possibilities. The fact that he's got that incredible amount of Scorpio says he's got enough Scorpio. What is he doing with a lesson in Scorpio? And yet Saturn is still in Scorpio and Saturn also says there's still a lesson there. I always look at both Saturn South Node to see if they have anything in common, anything where they are in the same sign, the same house, uh, the same quality, the same element. Here we have one of them in the house of Scorpio, the other in the sign of Scorpio. So both of them are saying there's a lesson connected to Scorpio. No matter how strong it is in the chart, it's still a lesson area. They're still working there. They're still trying to grow there. And the sun there, as far as I'm concerned, means he's still trying to grow there. He hasn't really got it together. He's a heavy Scorpio, but he still hasn't got it together. He's still trying to, to do something more to develop the positive side of Scorpio. <clears throat> Then we can also say that part of that South Node lesson is a Gemini thing. And what's the essence of Gemini? Probably of all the signs in the Zodiac, maybe Aquarius is the only thing that comes close to it. It's the ability to take things lightly, thumb the nose when necessary, shrug the shoulders, walk away. I don't have to do anything about it. Isn't that interesting? Watch it go by. <clears throat> but that air quality is the ability to, to, to literally take things lightly and not get hung up in them. So we've got two totally different principles there. Scorpio, which is as intense as you can get, and Gemini, which is as flippant and casual as you can get. Where's the lesson? <laughs> there are times when you look at the chart and you'll say, gee, I know there's a lesson there, but I'm not sure what it is. And then you talk to the person. You know, you don't have to be the voice of God and, and tell them all. You can ask them questions and say, you know, somewhere in this area, there's a lesson Maybe you can help clarify it. If I explain the principles, then you can talk about the details of your life and maybe we can put our finger on it. I had an interesting chart uh, just recently that, uh, that I recall because it, it was this sort of thing. The man had the south node in the seventh house and Saturn in the tenth in Gemini. So they were both in air. One was in an air house and one was in an air sign. So I said, as I said, I look for something in common between those two to say, what is it this person's working on? Where are they, there's their, where's their growing edge? And so there's the growing edge in air, and yet at the same time, that chart was loaded with air. Air was the dominant element if you just counted signs. All three air signs occupied Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. In fact, a lot of stuff in Gemini. So I looked at that and I said, my goodness, I, I really don't know what's going on here because it shows a lesson connected to air and yet you're loaded with air. Now the principle of air is this whole business of being able to detach, take things lightly, be an equal, uh, look at life and accept it and not have to change it, just understand it and talk about it. And one of these is in the house of partnership, the people who are peer relationships where you share really as an equal in a lasting cooperative relationship. And the other one's in the house of power, where you're supposed to be in some kind of executive position. Saturn in the 10th is a normal executive. They run things, they're a manager. So it's appropriate to be an executive, to be a manager. And there's Saturn up there in an air sign, also conjunct Uranus, an air planet. You know, so there, but there's some kind of problem here that I don't understand. And the guy says, I get the message. He says, I, I am an executive, I am a manager in my business, and I've been having problems with that because I feel like an equal. There's Saturn in air with Uranus in air. I feel like an equal. I feel like I shouldn't be have to tell people what to do. They should know what to do and just do it. You know, it's like they're my friends, they're my buddies. And so I'm really not an effective manager because I don't have the sense of discipline, you know, and be, I can't give orders very effectively. So he was not or exerting his executive power appropriately where he should have. And what was he doing in his partnership? That's where he was using his power inappropriately. He had his thumb on his wife. So he was not doing the equality thing where he should have in his marriage. He was doing it where he shouldn't, where he was supposed to be a manager. 
So it was still a lesson no matter how much air there was in the chart. So there's where you look for the theme, but you ask the person if you're not clear. And when you talk about them and what they're doing with their life, then you get some idea of what's going on. And, you, and then they know what to do to have a more effective life. Okay, now I'm going to put you all on the spot. We've got about three more minutes. Does anybody want to jump in and make some guesses as to what this young man over here on the right might be doing with his life? Granted that we see that there's this really strong power drive. We see that there's great need for relationships, that there's a conflict over independence, doing his own thing versus being dependent, close, involved, caring, sharing, subject to other people. Uh, remember the, the danger of the self-blocking thing, as I've told you, there's always that potential of, especially letter 10 or water, holding back and holding in and blocking. And we can see this kind of, he's sensitive to other people with the Libra, the Leo, really needing other people to pat him on the back and like him and, 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 and all. At the same time, there's some potential for alienation with friends, with Vesta in the 11th house and Virgo, having difficulty there. Saturn-Venus conjunction, somebody's going to say, you didn't need any of that. Saturn-Venus conjunction is enough to tell you he's got a problem in relationships. He's got difficulty in being close and caring because he's afraid he's going to get hurt and he's going to close up shop and pull inside lest he get hurt if he le really lets himself be vulnerable and open up and, and, and let his feelings show. So does anybody want to make any... Uh, any comments, any guesses, and then I'll tell you what's going on with him. Jerry. Now, I do have Jerry Brown's chart at home. I didn't bring it. I had, was trying to travel light, and I left all my f beautiful charts at home because I just couldn't manage them on this trip. Now, Jerry Brown's chart is very interesting. You know who has a chart similar to Jerry Brown? Anita Bryant. <laughs> Not the same. They're never the same, but some interesting similarities. Heavy Aries Taurus in the t ninth and 10th houses. Massive power in Aries and Taurus in the ninth and 10th. This could be a political person. He could be going out for power through politics. That would be a healthy manifestation, as far as I'm concerned. The healthy way to, when you have a power drive chart, you need to do it. You can do it through military service. You can do it through competitive business. You can do it through politics. You can do it through competitive games. But find a place to do the power struggle where it's appropriate. So it's not going to be a problem. So this would be a good chart for a politician. Be out, you know, canvassing and getting the world to like him and getting votes. You're absolutely right. He isn't, but that would be a, a good thing for him to do. Yes? Uh, could he be a powerful leader of some sort? I see now he pioneers this, all this peace movement. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the potential would be there for him to be very persuasive. That's similar to the idea of the politician, but a leader in some other field, in a, a business field or in the arts or in something else, dramatics. Yeah, there's a very strong leadership drive in the chart, no question about it. Others? Is he somewhat disturbed and not handling things well? You are quite right. He is disturbed. He is not handling things well at all. The power drive is there, but he's not exercising it. As long as he was, he was okay. He was a champion tennis player at one point. This is one way you do the power drive thing. You get on top by beating everybody else, by being better than others. He was also into making jewelry, the artistic potential. Venus on Saturn is very good for an artistic profession. The Libra emphasis. <coughs> And as long as he was doing his competitive tennis and making jewelry, he was okay. He was functioning pretty well. Anybody else want to make any more guesses before I tell you where he is now? Yes. He is now a catatonic schizophrenic in a hospital. He has totally shut up shop and turned inside. Everything gone into self-blocking. Catatonic is the kind of schizophrenia where they don't even move. They just sit still and refuse to do anything. Complete turnoff. They have to feed him with tubes.
And that's, remember this, those two dangers, the overdrive on the one hand and the self-blocking on the other. When you get the heavy 110 mixtures and other combinations, especially when you just add more water in, like the, the danger of Scorpio, if I can't play it my way, I won't play, period. You can get that with 110, with 18, with 810, the Mars signs and Saturn, those combinations get that my terms, my will, or I won't play at all. It's one possibility. Retrograde? No, as a matter of fact, I don't think any of them were retrograde. I don't have any listed as retrograde here. Yes? Yeah, I'm I'm interested in that theory about about planets on one side of the nodal axis being either confined or sheltered in some way. But usually if the moon is outside, they don't, they don't consider that. That's only when everything is on one side except the three outer planets. And I haven't had enough cases to test the theory yet. So to me, it's still a theory until I can really check it out. But I, I, I have just a little evidence that does suggest there is something to that, that when a planet crosses the nodal axis, uh, when they have been on one side, that there's a moving out in some in some way. I have seen that sometimes, yes. What Unfortunately, I don't know. I was given the data by someone who just gave me his present situation, and I do not know what triggered it, but I'm, I'm reasonably sure it was problems in interpersonal relationships. But it might have been just that he couldn't do the work he wanted to do, and he just retired inside. No. Now, unfortunately, I do not have any more information on this particular case. I collect data whenever I can get it, but lots of times I don't get much information. Yeah. I guess this person would end up loving themselves anyway. You know? No. As a matter of fact, he hates himself. He is extremely self-destructive. This is not a chart of self-love. said that Venus and Scorpio has a touch of self-destruction to it, you know, and in terms of Saturn, I would imagine that... Uh, all of his preoccupations about love and everything would be turned to himself, destroy himself, love himself, be intense with himself, do it all to himself rather than be involved with other people. Yeah, but if he loved himself, he would take care of himself. He is actually trying to commit suicide and has been prevented by the hospital staff. He does not love himself. He does not accept himself. That is a major part of the problem. That's part of the lesson of that Venus Saturn is to learn to like himself, to learn to love himself and accept himself and be comfortable with himself and express himself. And at the moment, he's not doing that. Okay, lunchtime. <laughs>